I've taken a look at many prominent chains of amusement and theme parks, such as Cedar Fair, Six Flags, Merlin Entertainments, and SeaWorld Entertainment, and given my predictions as to what I think could be the next coaster to be removed from each of their respective parks. Today I will be doing just that, but this time I will look at different parks across the world that are independently owned or part of other chains. As always, I have to make a disclaimer here. I am not very familiar with most of the parks on this list, nor have I visited most of these parks myself yet. In fact, I've only been to two of these parks. My predictions are based on information I know about these parks, and I will make my best educated guesses about what I personally think will be removed next from each park, so don't get upset about one of your favorite rides being on here. This is purely 100% speculation, and none of these removals are confirmed in any way by these parks. And also, just because I think a coaster may be removed from that park next, it does not mean that I think it is going to happen at any point in the near future. If it does happen, it could be 10, 15, 20 years from now. With that out of the way, let's get into my list. Starting off is one that I'm pretty familiar with. This is Kennywood, and for Kennywood, I think Exterminator will likely be the next coaster to be removed. This is a 1999 Revershawn Spinning Wild Mouse Coaster, and this is actually a really fun ride. It has some pretty decent theming. It's completely in the dark, and it's just really cool. Uh, it gets really long lines, so it's a pretty popular ride at the park. So I think it will be around for quite a while longer, uh, but I do think it could be the next coaster to leave Kennywood when looking at all the other options in the park. Next up on the list, we have Lagoon, which is in Farmington, Utah. And for this park, I also selected their Wild Mouse. This was a difficult park to make a selection for me, but I did settle on the 1998 Maurer Wild Mouse Coaster. I just think that they could utilize this space for something much better. Lagoon has a lot of family-oriented roller coasters. They have a great selection of family coasters, in fact. And they could just use this space for something a little more unique, I think. Next up, we have Fantasia Land. For Fantasia Land, I selected Crazy Bats. To me, Crazy Bats is the only obvious choice in this park. It opened in 1988. It was formerly called Space Center up until 2000, and then Temple of the Nighthawk until 2018, when it was renamed to Crazy Bats. This is a Vacoma MK900 indoor coaster. It's actually pretty long. It's nearly 4,000 feet long. It's just an older ride. I think they could really utilize the space for a more modern attraction that's a little bit more in line with what they've been doing lately. All of their other coasters here are fairly new. The oldest one besides this opening in 1996 and most of them opening in the 2000s. So to me, Crazy Bats was the obvious choice for Fantasia Land. Next up is Kentucky Kingdom. I think T3 is going to get removed from Kentucky Kingdom at some point in the future. It probably won't be for a while. They did get new trains for this a few years back. But this is a 1995 Vacoma SLC, so it's a pretty old one. And from what I hear, this is also one of the very worst ones out there, which... Of course, that's not a good thing, especially being an SLC. Not much else to say there. Holiday World. This is a really difficult one to think about, but at the same time, I can't really see any of their other coasters going at any point in the very near future. In fact, I don't even think this one is going anywhere anytime soon. But I did select a Legend, which is their Custom Coasters International monster that opened in the year 2000. But unfortunately, I didn't get to ride this. It was closed for retracking when I went, so hopefully that'll change soon. Uh, and I'll get to ride this, but I did have to select Legend for Holiday World. Fuji Q Highland. I think that their coaster called Voyage, I'm not going to try to pronounce the rest of the name, but I think that will be removed next. This was kind of a clear cut pick for me. This is a family type inverted coaster that opened in 2001. It's really unique looking. It was manufactured by Hoi Sangyo LTD, and it looks kind of cool actually. It looks like a really fun small family ride. It just doesn't necessarily fit in well with the rest of the park, and I just think if they're going to remove something to make more space this would probably be one of their options when it comes to their roller coasters i wanted to cover energylandia in this list of course the park opened in 2014 it's a very new park but they have a ton of roller coasters they honestly wouldn't be too bad off in getting rid of two or three of their coasters because they have so many very small kitty coasters just thrown in there the one that i selected for energylandia though is circus coaster 
which is a 2017 SBF Visa oval coaster. And that's literally all this coaster is. It's just an oval. And one of the reasons I picked this one instead of the many other kiddie coasters in this park or anything else is that this one has zero theming, unlike a lot of the other kiddie coasters, which look to have really good theming here. Circus Coaster, I think, will be the first coaster on the chopping block for this huge park in Poland. For Hershey Park, many people have been talking about Wildcat, the very first GCI coaster, possibly getting the RMC iBox conversion, or even getting some sort of treatment by GCI, whether it be a refurbishment or utilizing that new track they revealed recently. Personally, I think that Wildcat probably is most likely to be leaving the park next, and I do think there's a good chance it could get converted into something else. I really like the idea of GCI converting this ride into something new with their new steel track because this is the very first GCI, so it would just make sense in a lot of ways. But whatever Hershey Park does with this ride, I'm sure they're going to do something with it in the future, and I'm really excited to see what they do with Wildcat. Most people will say that this is a very rough, unbearable ride, and I think this issue will be addressed at some point very soon. For Port Aventura in Spain, this was a really difficult pick for me. I had four different options for this park that I think could potentially be removed next, but I did go with Stampeda, which is a 1998 CCI racing wooden coaster. Kumbak trains were added for the 2007 season, which I am aware of, so those trains aren't really new at this point, so I don't think that necessarily says that this ride is going to be around a whole lot longer. Although, it probably will, but I think this ride could potentially be a good candidate for an RMC treatment, and they do have another wooden coaster in the park, which is a smaller, more family-oriented coaster, so they would still have a wooden coaster. For Europa Park, I selected Alpine Express Enzion, which opened in 1984. This is a Mach-powered coaster. VR was added in 2015, and when I see like these really old, small, powered coasters, and then I see they added VR in fairly recent years, it's like, to me, that kind of spells out a decline in popularity in recent years, and it seems like maybe they're adding the VR as a little bit of a gimmick to try to gain some more popularity with it again and sort of market it as a newer attraction. And looking at all the other coasters in the park, I just don't see any any other obvious candidates. For that reason mainly, I went with Alpine Express Enzion. Last on the list, I have Nagashima Spa Land in Japan. This was another difficult choice for me to make, but I went with Jet Coaster, which is a Togo coaster that I'm not even sure when it opened. There's no opening date on RCDB, but looking at this ride, it's a very, very basic layout. It's one of those old, simple Togo coasters that just kind of doesn't really do anything, to be honest. It just looks kind of boring, and uh, I think this space in the park could be very well utilized for a newer family coaster at least or something much more modern something more exciting it is kind of cool how this goes over the water but it'd be cool if they could maybe put something here to incorporate that have it go over the water as well with that being said what do you all think about my picks for these parks be sure to let me know your opinions linked in the card above you will find a playlist which features along with this video all of the other videos from my next coaster removal series where i discuss cedar fair six flags sea world entertainment and merlin entertainments thanks so much once again for taking the time to stop by my channel and check out this video this is coaster daddy bye